Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Dark Horse Game Dev Cookbook. It's a pleasure to have you here. You've probably heard about shaders before, but you know exactly what they do and what they are. You might know them as that annoying thing that you need to install sometimes when you update your game. Well, in this episode I'll be covering what a shader is, and after watching this you'll know exactly what you need to know about the basics of shading. So stay tuned. Let's first talk about history to know why these programmable shaders came to be. In the 70s and 80s, games were made in 2D, rendered in resolution 640x350 pixels, which means that every game was being displayed with 224,000 pixels. Just as a comparison, today's full HD resolution is actually 2 million pixels. That's a big difference. Also in the 70s and 80s, we had these cool 3D projects that were happening at different universities uh, in the United States, but those were all mostly research projects that were exploring these kinds of things. As the time went on, the game progressed, and so did the tech behind them. In the 90s, we have first commercial 3D games, out of which we can mention classics like Quake and Doom. That was the first boom. You can finally play games in 3D, how awesome is that? However, these games were not super nice in terms of graphics, at least when you compare them to today's graphics. They could only show a certain set of primitives, and that was not a lot of primitives, not a lot of polygons, and you can remember how it looked pretty much like a bunch of triangles uh, on heap. And the reason was super simple, the GPUs were still not as powerful as they are today. They were not powerful enough to actually display more details in those kinds of games. And there was one more important detail, and that detail is really important for today's video. Many GPU functionalities were actually closed from programmers. They were internal to the GPU itself and mostly done on the hardware level. Like even sticking a texture to a polygon was a process that was not really available to a game developer to fiddle with. And that was a really big constraint on the developers because they couldn't make the game they really wanted to, at least not visually. So the first boom happened with DirectX 8 API. That API enabled programmers to do something, so it did expose some sort of functionality to programmers so they could do some custom stuff with graphics, but it was still not powerful enough to cause any sort of major revolution. The big boom actually happened in 2002 with DirectX 9. With DirectX 9, they published the so-called Shading Model 2.0, and that model contained one really cool component, and that was called High Level Shading Language, HLSL. That was actually a completely new language, it was actually based on C programming language. And what this shading model 2.0 enabled, it enabled programmers to write custom logic for how they want to manipulate these vertices, polygons and pixels on the screens. Like it's a revolution! And that's why we have games as we have today. Once the GPUs opened these internal things to the developers, it enabled the developers to do all sorts of crazy things, and that's why we have so many stunning visual effects in the games nowadays. Everything you see on your screen when you're playing games is a set of vectors that form triangles that form polygons. And these triangles or polygons, they form these big 3D objects or 3D models. So, for you to see this 3D model, this triangle needs to enter a so-called rendering pipeline. This triangle enters as a triangle with some properties and ends up being a triangle that's part of this big 3D model that is properly positioned, lit and textured. And that's exactly the result of shaders at their work. A shader is nothing but a computer program that defines how a certain vector, primitive or pixel behaves. When you use shaders, you can create a lot of custom-made fire, water effects, motion blur, a lot of different UI effects and so on. With today's GPU's processing power, you can do crazy things with shaders. Shaders are getting more powerful than ever nowadays. They do all sorts of crazy things. There are three types of shaders that you need to know. These are the basic shaders. There is vertex shader, geometry shader, and pixel shader. The vertex shader defines how a certain vector behaves. So in your vertex shader, you can write a program that moves a certain vertex, which is just a 3D dot in 3D space. So if you move a set of these vertices that form this body, you're actually warping this body. So you're doing that with a shader. Geometry shader is slightly different than the vertex shader because it manipulates a primitive and not a vertex. And the main function of this geometry shader is that 
it adds primitives on top of other primitives. For example, if you have a triangle, you can add more edges or faces to the triangle and then you get the pyramids. And then the third one is the pixel shader that operates on a single pixel of your screen. And this one is suitable for normal and bump mapping, for example. If you want to fake a 3D texture, if you want to have that feeling that something is three-dimensional, you can use this type of shader to make that a reality just by playing with math, basically. These three shaders happen in a specific order inside of the rendering pipeline. First being a vertex shader, second is the geometric shader, and then the last one comes, uh, the pixel shader. That's the order they execute in. In between of them, there might be more steps that are part of the rendering pipeline. And that's it, now you know what a shader is. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit the subscribe button down below and leave a like. Also, if you have any questions or comments or feedback, please do leave them in the comments below. I will be happy to answer. Until the next time, enjoy.